Verzet Super Boil. Shop to be drinking shitty beer. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes, and Booze Reviews. Sun's out, I'm staying in. Fuck that, I learnt my lesson. And I'm staying in with a bottle of this. This is, um, I don't know how to pronounce this. It's got a very small T and it's Verzet. Now I've been told this is Belgian, but I'm in my head with that little T there. I don't know if you can see this or not, but can you see that now? Hang on. You've got a little T and it's Verzet. I'm thinking it's from Yorkshire because it's Verzet, but it's not. This is from Belgium. And it is a uh, brewing, by all accounts, a brewing beer. When I say brewing, I mean brown. That's Flemish for brown, brown beer. Um, it's called Super Boil. There's a reason it's called Super Boil as well. It's not because of the uh, big lumps you get on the side of your face when you ain't been eating your vitamins and your veg, it is because they boil that a hell of a lot longer than you would normally with um, an average brown beer from Belgium. Uh, in, in Belgium you normally would be brewing that, brewing, no pun intended, you normally would be boiling that for an hour and a half. This one has been brewed for 16 hours. And that's a long time compared to uh, one and a half hours, obviously. And it's supposed to give it a really intense caramel flavour. And also, it gives it a like a bitter, or sour type of flavour. I've heard some good things about that. So um, I want to just quickly talk about the, the uh, brewery. Um, they're quite a new brewery it, by Belgian standards. They, I think they were formed in 2011. And they're a sort of craft brewer and they've they started off and they were brewing in other people's breweries and doing collaborations and stuff like that then they got their own place started brewing their own um their own beer and they've got a, quite a range this from what i've read is a seasonal beer it's not part of the core range so um you know you'll only be able to get that at certain times of the year i've got some beers of europe if you do want to try it so yeah give that a ball or was it was it beer sniffers i think that was beer sniffers that i got this from yeah so if you fancy that you're gonna to have to be uh, a bit lively getting that because that might be around anyway let's stop gassing and let's investigate this beer right magoo we'll get the bins on Magoo is fucking blind. The name is Magoo. Yeah, it's 330ml bottle, it's 6%. It's called Super Voil from Tvirzit. And uh, everything else is in Flemish, but the ingredients I've worked out are water, barley, hops and yeast. What you would expect. And that's about it, really. Uh, there's the cap. Tvirzit. And there's the label, Super Boil. And there you go, lovers. Right, let's get it open and let's see what it's all about. I've got the cap lifter. Let's put it to good use. Oh, God. Immediately, even from here, sourness. Caramel malt and sourness. It's almost like a wine. Here's a little story for you. Do you know what that smell? You know, I was explaining before about the, um, the memory triggers you, triggers you get from a smell. This smells like altar wine. Now, what is altar wine? Years ago, my parents, well, my parents were always paddies, but I was brought up Catholic and I was an altar boy. And what we used to do, they used to have the wine there that they used for the mass. And uh, 
it was disgusting stuff apparently i'm not i, I never like wine never have but you'd smell it and it would all, it was almost like vinegar and this is like a sweet vinegar it's like do you know what it reminds me of balsamic vinegar if you if you've ever had uh, balsamic vinegar that's like an italian sort of sweet vinegar they use it for cooking and uh, for marinades and uh, salad dressings but that's what it's reminding me of balsamic vinegar and altar wine <laughs> fuck what a combination disgusting yeah very wine like indeed which is intriguing me now this is going to be sour now i love sour beers don't get me wrong and uh like road and back are one of the best in my opinion they do some fantastic sour beers but this is going to be intriguing so let's get it into the glass now this is chilled i've had it in the fridge the smell i i cannot cannot emphasize the sourness on this beer just from the aroma is pretty outstanding i have to say and it's as they say it's from the um it's from the extra boil that it's given there's everything in the glass head is dissipating very very lively carbonation that is a murky opaque brown and there is a, like a, a beige one finger head on it God, more caramel malt there but it is sour i want to try it while it's still got a little bit of head on Cheers, or Prost, as they say in Belgium. Oh my good God. Yep, that is sour. That is really fucking sour. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that is the sourest beer I've ever tasted. It is tart to the point where you saw my reaction. That's what it's like. And that pretty much describes the flavour. It's a cross between balsamic vinegar, altar wine, that's like a almost vinegar-esque wine, sherbet, um, what else? There's a touch of caramel on there as well. But the sourness on this is just insane. It is, if, I don't know whether there is a, a sourness um, meter, if you like, you know, like with, with heat, you've got Scoville, so I don't know what there is for sourness, but this would be pretty fucking high up there. Head, good head retention on that, I have to say. I thought that was going to dissipate, but it hasn't. That's settled down now to quite a tightly packed one finger beige white head. You do get used to it. And once you do, once you get used to that initial sourness, this is a pretty darn nice beer. Cool. That is astringent, believe me. It's colours pretty, uh, it looks like a cup of, um, it looks like a glass of chocolate. But believe me, this is anything but sweet. Mm. The dryness that you get on it, as I said, is vinegar balsamic vinegar because there is beneath all that there is a little touch of sweetness on there then you get in the astringent vinegar on top of that there's a little bit of sherbet just to top it all off and then the faintest fucking ice cream man what the fuck um then you got the faintest of caramel malts on there and that's oh actually i'm sniffing that now and there's a touch of vanilla on there as well mm. 
I'm not getting much vanilla on the flavour though. The dryness of it is so intense though. And it leaves your, leaves your mouth puckering. But as sour beers go, that isn't bad. So what's the verdict on this? Well, um, I had an idea of what to expect, but that sourness is just off the scale for me. I like sour beer, don't get me wrong. And this is nice. Not the best though. I think the Rodenbach Grand Cru for me was the ultimate sour beer. But I have to say, this, is, um, this takes the uh, flavour intensity up to a new level of sourness. Um, one thing this can't be accused of is not having any flavour or character. It is super, super sour, as if I haven't said that a thousand times already. Um, do I like it? I do, but I think one bottle would be enough for me. This is one of them ones you'd need to drink with, I don't know, some food, some savoury food, but um, I wouldn't make a habit of drinking bottles and bottles of this. Um, I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10. Um, it's not bad as sour beers go. Not as good as the Grand Cru, which was for me was a 10 out of 10. This is up there. I mean, there's some fucking serious flavour intensity on it. But it's just a bit, a bit too fucking, you know, face puckering for me. So yeah, I'll give that an 8 out of 10. Would I recommend it? If you like sour beers, this is the ultimate. It's like, if you like hot curries, have a foul. If you like sour beers, have that. I don't think you're going to get sourer than that. Certainly not in Belgium anyway. So yeah, 8 out of 10. And recommended if you like sour beer. And remember, beer is working class champagne.